Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vnchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vnchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757-230-2110. To honor copyright laws, we have removed some audio and video elements from this message. Now here's this week's message. Relationships. They make up every human interaction and activity in our lives. Not only are they just a part of life, God made them integral into who we are. In God's Word, we find the ultimate guide in navigating conflict, relating to others, repairing broken relationships, and letting go of your past. Let's dive deep into the wisdom of God and get real. How are you? If you are new with us, let me introduce myself. My name is Andy Mead. I am one of the teaching pastors here. I'm glad that you're with us. If you're watching online, we're glad that you're joining us. And we believe God has a word for you. And we're excited about what God's doing through this series that we're in right now. Call, call, we're calling Get Real. It's all about relationships and kind of getting past the, the pseudo stuff and going a little deeper. You know, when we're talking about relationships, there's something that is so important it's one of the core driving needs that we have. You know, there's some needs in our lives that we just, that we have and, and people want, they look for, like uh, food, of course, sleep, shelter, uh, money, things money can buy. Uh, many people want uh, well-being for their kids, eternal life, a feeling of significance. There's a lot of things that are very important. Some of these are core needs. And if you had the power to to give somebody that you care about food, for example, you would never, and they were hungry, you would never withhold them food for like two weeks, right? That's crazy. And yet, sometimes we withhold weeks or even years, something that is every bit as important as a craving as food, as some of these things I just mentioned. And that's the feeling of significance, the feeling of being valued. The feeling of appreciation. And so today we're talking about how to add value to somebody, how to add value to people in your, in your relationships, in your life. And the single greatest way to do that is through appreciation. In fact, that's what the word means. If you were to buy something like uh, a home or a, you know, a condo, uh, certain, those things tend to go up. A piece of land, certain artwork. Uh, a gun, some jewelry, certain things will go up in value over time. They appreciate. Other things they depreciate. They go down in value. And you've experienced that if you've ever bought a new car. The minute you drove off the lot and you got into the street, you just, you just set yourself back five or ten grand. I mean, instantly, depreciation. So, that's, so, so when we appreciate people, we increase their value. This is important because if you're a parent and you want to increase the value in your kids, we need to learn to appreciate them. If you're an employer or a boss and you want to increase the value of the people that are working under you or working with you, you appreciate them. If you're a teacher and you want to increase the value of your students, you appreciate them. And when you appreciate them, they go up in value. And so it's true all in our families and everything. And the Bible says that we need to be people of appreciation. And Paul, the Apostle Paul, who wrote a lot of the New Testament, was an absolute pro at appreciation. He was always appreciating, appreciating people and talking about the importance of appreciation. If you pull out your outline with me, you'll see we have some verses in there. Most of them are from Paul because he is just bar none, he's so good at appreciating, we can learn a lot from him. He says, encourage one another and build each other up. He's talking about appreciation. Ephesians 4.29, speak what is helpful for building up others according to their needs. And it is a core human need to be appreciated. William James, the late <clears throat> philosopher and psychologist, said that the number one, the most vital need of every human being is appreciation, to feel valued. And so we, we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about how can we learn to be people of appreciation, grow in that area, adding value to the relationships, the people around us. And this is a great thing to do. So Paul talks about 
ways we see when we look at his life, he was appreciating people. And he did it in three primary ways. So let's look at that. First of all, Paul, he taught us that we appreciate people's loyalty. There's something to be said when somebody sticks with you, when they are faithful through thick and thin, especially when it's challenging, especially when we're not easy to be around, especially through like organizations that have lots of transition. Loyalty is huge. Paul appreciated the Philippians. He had a lot of transition going on in his personal life. He said, I thank God for every time uh, that I think of you. Why? Because of the way in which you have helped me in the work of the gospel. Now notice this. He says, from the very first day until now, both now that I am in prison and also when I was, in, when I was free. So he says, you guys, you've been with me through all of the stuff. And, you know, you're like my booster club. You're there and, and, uh, and in prison, uh, really, you just ate meagerly back in those days. If you were going to have any kind of sustenance, people would have to bring it to you. Each day they would show up, bring you food. That's, that's just the system that it worked with back then in the Roman days. And he says, you're still here. I mean, here I am. I'm in prison because of the gospel. But there's, they're cheering them on. Go for it, Paul. You can do it. And listen, this is so important when you have people in your life that they are loyal to you. And this is something worth being appreciated. Sometimes uh, we struggle with how, how am I supposed to appreciate show and so? They're not perfect. Well, no, they're not. And if you're waiting for somebody to be perfect until you appreciate them, then you're going to be like everybody else, which most people don't uh, go around appreciating much people. M most people, they just, they have lots of mean remarks and lots of negativity but we're supposed to rise above that. And so one of the ways is we look for people's loyalty. And you know, Sharon and I started this church 23 years ago. Just started out, it was just, just us, and, and it was just in our garage, and then moved to an uh, elementary school, moved to the cinema cafe, and then here this was a renovated, well, we renovated, it was a racquetball center. But I want to know, uh, for those of you, I just want to recognize who, if you would you raise your hand, if you were with us all the way back to the elementary school days, would you raise your hand? See if, I see some, yeah, all the way, keep your hand up from the elementary. That was way back before we went to the cinema cafe. Okay, keep your hands up. There's several of you. And now, if you were part, keep your hands up. If you were part of, of our church when we were in the cinema cafe, raise your hands. Keep your hands up. Well, quite a few more. How about when we moved into this place in 2001? Okay, we got some more. And then in 2004, we were, up until that point, we were 97% white. And we, did, we realized God spoke to us and said, no, you're, you need to represent your community. You need to be racially diverse. And we changed in 2004. That was a huge transition. How many of you were with us through that? And then in 2006, we had a major renovation to change this place into uh, a ch more like a church. If you were here through that, <laughs> remember how hard that was? Keep your hands up. I mean, that's, we had the, the portable toilets outside and the power would sometimes shut off the power in here because people flush too much or something. I don't know. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Thank you. You can put your hands down. I want to thank you for being loyal. That was not easy. Going through all of the transitions and there's more. You know, some of you haven't been around as long as I just said, but you still have seen a lot of stuff. You've seen just, and it's hard to hang in there. But you know what? That's what makes this church great. Yeah. It's, it's, it's things like loyalty. You stick, stick through it. Yeah, I appreciate that. I do. You're significant. You've had to go through so much. You've had to listen to bad sermons, <laughs> sick jokes, <laughs> you know, worship that was, you know, like, too loud, you know, give you a headache, video clips that weren't mixed right. I mean, this, the list goes on, right? You're just going, yeah, well, Andy, you're just getting started. <laughs> but you're loyal. And that means, that means a ton. You know, one of the things that we've, we've uh, been uh, part of for a lot, a lot of us in the church, is going to regional conferences. Before we had our own region, this is Vineyard USA, you know, we always went, we were part of the eastern region, so we'd go up east and be part of those. But the, the last five years, every other year, we did a regional conference here, and we hosted it. We did one five years ago. We did one uh, not this summer, but the summer before. And a number of you were part of that. I appreciate you for being part of that. Not only that you came, but so, uh, a number of you served because we were hosting it. You know, next summer, this coming summer in 2018, we're going to have another regional conference that we're 
that we're, we get to be part of, but we're not going to host it. We're going to go to Myrtle Beach. It's going to be amazing because Myrtle Beach is beautiful, not as nice as Virginia Beach. If you're listening online, I'm sorry if you're from Myrtle Beach, but, but I mean, Myrtle Beach is still a great place. And we're going we're gonna, to uh, meet at a, a resort. So it's right on the ocean front. And so it's going to be amazing. It's going to be a great time to connect. In fact, I put something in your program. You can pull it out. It's a little postcard. It gives you a little more information about it, how you can register and be part of it. And uh, I want to also show you a video. So you just real quick video so you can kind of get an idea of what we're, what we're doing there. Watch this. Hey, Vineyard Mid-Atlantic Region. Every two years we gather to grow in our faith, build relationships, worship together, and reconnect as a family. You're invited to join us for our upcoming Pray and Play Getaway in sunny Myrtle Beach, South Carolina from July 10th to the 12th. Our leaders have worked hard with the resort on the cost so that a family of four can stay for just $100 more than previous years. And you get to stay oceanfront. Our prayer and goal is that we will all reconnect, worship, and relax together as a family all at the same resort. You will be steps away from the beach, and those of you who like to get out and about, Myrtle Beach has plenty to offer in shopping, restaurants, and family-friendly entertainment. We want you to experience a mini vacation with your vineyard family. So, the schedule will reflect that with more free time during the day than in years past, and with sessions in the mornings and evenings. We also have some great experiences in store for students and children with age-specific activities and events, and they'll have their own space to meet, learn, and worship together. Early registration is only $100 per person and ends January 15th. Head on over to vmark2018.com to sign your family up and register today. going to come. Everybody here is invited. We'd love to have you be part of that. You know, what I love about things like this is it's not just a vacation because sometimes our, our family's gone on vacations. You know, I go to Disney and we're running around, you know, Disney World and then we come home and I need a vacation. You know, I'm so tired. This is something where, you know, usually when we plan our vacations, we think, how can I get some physical rest? But this is a way to say I'm going to have physical rest and spiritual rest. A place where I, I, I come back rejuvenated, not just emotionally and mentally, physically, but also spiritually. Because it's going to be a place where we really connect with God, connect with one another, other vineyards. Uh, we, uh, Sharon and I lead this region. It's about 40 vineyards uh, from, uh, from Maryland all the way down to the Carolinas. And it's going to be a great, great experience. So I hope you can come and be part of that. And a number of you have been loyal over the years coming to these, these conferences and helping out. And thank you so much for, for, for doing that. But, you know, loyalty uh, is the bedrock of friendships. It's the bedrock of marriages. Some of you who have been married have been loyal through difficult times, maybe through a bankruptcy or maybe through uh, somebody who got sick or maybe, uh, maybe they just, your mate stumbled and, and they had an affair and you stuck by them. Those things are not easy to do. That's a huge mark of loyalty. And so we can appreciate loyalty. You know, I don't know if you've ever been to Old Faithful out in Yellowstone, but Old Faithful is not the most beautiful geyser. It's not the largest geyser, but it is the most faithful. I mean, it's one of the most faithful geysers. Just every 90 minutes, you can count on it. You can count on it. Loyalty. Uh, a couple of years ago, I went to a Redskins game, and they weren't doing well. That might be a shock to some of you. <laughs> Fourth quarter, people started leaving. They had the Redskins jerseys on, you know, and they're, they're streaming out. And I'm thinking, whoa, where's the loyalty here? What's the problem? See, when do you need loyalty? You need it most when you're falling flat on your face, when you're not looking good. You know, that's when loyalty really proves its metal. And so that's certainly something that you can appreciate and other people. Paul talked about, hey, from the very first day, no matter what I went through, he said, you guys were loyal. Number two, we need to appreciate people's differences. Celebrate people's differences. And certainly we're here in this church body uh, represent a lot, of a lot of different people. And within your own family system, you'll have, uh, you'll have differences. Within our kids, we raise the kids the same way, and yet they're so different. And we need to celebrate differences. 
Paul talks about this in 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 12. He's talking about how uh, God puts together people that are different intentionally because it makes the full package. It makes us more effective. And he compares it to a human body and how you wouldn't want, you know, two, you, you wouldn't want like uh, an, an eye where your nose is. You don't need three eyes. You need two, but you need that nose. And he gives it, he gives, here's how he says it. He says, I want you to think about how all this makes you more significant, not less. A body isn't just a single part blown up into something huge. It's all the different but similar parts arranged and functioning together. If foot said, I'm not elegant like hand embellished with rings, I guess I don't belong to the body, would that make it so? If ear said, I'm not beautiful like eye, limpid and expressive, I don't deserve a place on the head, would you want to remove it from the body? If the body was all eye, how could it hear? If all ear, how could it smell? As it is, we see that God has carefully placed each part of the body right where he wanted it. So it's important that we don't insist that everybody is an ear, everybody's an eye, everybody, I mean, everybody's a foot. We're different. And the tendency, though, is, is we don't tend to connect or even like people that are different than us. We want them to look like us, to smell like us, to walk like us, to talk like us, to do like us. I mean, the, we, we're, that's who we naturally have affinity with. Paul says, hey, don't do that. Don't, don't just look at it that way. He goes, appreciate differences. People are different on purpose. God creates it. He's behind all of that. And we learn to appreciate that. You know, I think it's interesting. It's kind of like God's unique sense of humor, how he'll often put opposites together in marriage. I mean, they're just so different. If you're married, you're probably thinking, yeah, I, I can give testimony to that. It's way, way different. I mean, sometimes he'll, it just seems like he'll put a morning person, early riser with somebody who's like, they don't even believe in God until 11 a.m., you know. The, <laughs> you know. <laughs> or he'll put somebody who's like, you know, real energetic and, and, and uh, wants to go out and always explore and adventurous with somebody who's not necessarily like that at all. They're not, they're not looking for the latest adventure. They're happy with the way things are going. And then, you know, you have the same thing with uh, money. You know, he'll put like somebody who's like uh, a free, Dave Ramsey calls him a free spirit, right? They're just the kind of like, budget, what budget? You know, just, <laughs> we don't need a budget. You know, when the, when the tough gets going, the, you know, they go shopping, right? <laughs> Somebody said that when you get to retirement, whether you end up with a goose egg or a nest egg really depends on the chick you marry. <laughs> That's kind of, I'm on the edge now. <laughs> Nobody threw anything, so I'm, I'm halfway to home. <laughs> but we're different, right? I mean, we just... We just think different. We look different. Even when in married couples, you know, with sex, some are just like really romantic. They're all, you know, Casanova romance and, you know, real firecracker. The other one's like a dud, right? <laughs> you know, one says, hey, let's drop everything. The other one says, hey, why don't you drop dead? <laughs> it's like the guy who comes home and, he, you know, he gives his wife two aspirin. And she goes, what's this for? He goes, it's for your headache. She goes, I don't have a headache. He goes, now I know. <laughs> we're just different you know and our tendency is to let that stuff grind us and upset us I find it fascinating how married couples sometimes will spend year after year trying to change their mate to make them more like themselves and finally when they're years and years later finally when they're like each other they divorce God puts us together with people that are different than us not just if you're married, but in family systems and in relationships at work and in churches and small groups. It's part of the way we grow. It's part of the way we're able to develop in maturity and make her make her become more Christ-like. Because God says, I want you to appreciate people that are not like you. Colossians 3, there are verses 13 and 15. In the Phillips translation says this: be patient and tolerant with one another. Always ready to forgive if you have a difference with anyone. For you are called to live as one unified body and always be thankful. You know, it's a good thing when you recognize the value that people are different. I mean, if you go to get ice cream, 
you don't want just you go into a shop and all they have is we only have vanilla. What, you, I mean, who would ever go to that shop, right? Or we only have chocolate. I mean, you just you want options, right? Hey, I want to see you know. And God makes us like ice cream. You know, we're all types of flavors, and it's a good thing. Number three, we appreciate people's efforts. First Thessalonians one, there in verses two and three. In the Good News Translation, it says, We always thank God for you, how you put your faith into practice, and how your love, notice this, made you work so hard. He's talking about, circle that, work so hard. He's talking about effort. Know that you don't take people's effort for granted. And it's easy to do sometimes. You know, somebody's working real hard, and we don't even, we don't recognize it. And that can be frustrating from somebody who's really putting the effort out. I mean, there's, if, you're, if you're a parent of preschoolers, you, your preschooler probably wants to help clean the house when you're cleaning. And sometimes they're not all that productive. You know, I know when our kids were little and, I, they, you know, we were cleaning, they would, hey, I want to help, I want to help. And, you know, they'd take Windex and put it on the, the wood floors and then they'd take the wood polish and put it on the windows. And part of them, I'm thinking, uh... You're making my work longer and harder here, not help, you know, but, but appreciating the effort. When I was in middle school, I, I think I was in eighth grade, and I took metal shop, and we had different projects we had to make. One of the projects I wanted to make was a, 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 a thing for logs, fire logs that go in the fireplace, you know, this metal, uh, metal rack. And so, and I'm not really a craftsman type person, so it was, you know, I kind of figured that out, I guess, through metal shop. Maybe I started going a different direction after that. I mean, it wasn't that hard, just bending, you know, getting some angles and welding things. But and I th when I was done, it, it was obvious. It was, you know, it wasn't straight. It wasn't, you know, there was, you know, but it worked. So I, I wrapped it up, gave it to my dad for Christmas, and he appreciated it. You know, he didn't criticize it, and I appreciate that. You know, when we recognize the effort that somebody puts into it, that makes a big deal. That's a big deal. Now, listen, at work, you have to make a distinction between, between recognition and appreciation. Recognition is just for a performance. And, and, and quality work, performance matters. I mean, hopefully we all know that. Performance is a big deal. And so you recognize somebody for their performance. In fact, if you were to recognize somebody for poor performance, that would be disingenuous. And they would know that. I mean, they would just be kind of, uh, you're not, that's not legit. Now, other people certainly would know it. And so we need to, we recognize for quality performance, but appreciation is more about who they are. It's a relational thing. It's saying, do you have value? And the Bible says that we were all made in the image of God. And so there's, he stamped us with, with who he is and, and his character. Now, some of us will veer pretty far away from that, but there's always things we can look for and we can appreciate, like somebody's loyalty, somebody, when somebody is, uh, is, is different than us and the effort that they make. So we want to look for opportunities uh, to, um, to appreciate people, okay? And one of the ways that we can appreciate uh, is through is appreciating parents. If your parents are still alive, you can appreciate them. You know, if, if they raised you, they were there. They certainly probably weren't perfect. I don't know any parents that are perfect. But they, they could you, you know, your parents, if they didn't raise you, if they didn't have you, you know, their life probably would have been a little easier. They could have taken more vacations. They would have had more clothes. You know, they could, they'd have more time, more date nights. You know, I'm not saying that they're not, they're not appreciative if you're around. I'm just saying life probably would have been different for them. And they made the effort. It's hard being a parent. If you're a parent, you know that. It's hard, man. You're always putting out, always putting out, and sometimes you don't really get appreciated. Now, certainly I realize that there's a couple days set aside by the government but maybe, <laughs> maybe you don't need to wait for those, you know, to appreciate, you know, your, your parents, you know, and, you know, appreciate, because hey, sometimes it's hard. This past summer in July, one of those windstorms, one of the trees, we have some pretty big trees in our yard, one of, the, one of the limbs fell and hit our roof and smashed up our porch a little bit. I thought, wow, this could get dangerous. If this thing fell down, I mean, somebody could get hurt. So I called a company to come and cut the tree down. It was an old tree, and I knew that. So they cut the tree down, and then the stump is there. Before they grind it, they took a break. Sharon and I ran over there, and we counted the rings. I want to know how old it was. You know, a ring for every year. Counted the rings, 250 rings. That, that tree was older 
than the U.S. Constitution. Really, you know, old tree. But, you know, it's interesting. When we were, I was looking at those tree rings, they're not all equal length, you know, the distance from one ring to the next. Some are shorter than others. You know, you know how that works, right? If, if it's a good year for the tree, if it's, there's lots of sunshine, lots of, you know, the rain, good conditions, environmental conditions, the rings, the, gr- the tree grows more full, and the, ri- and the rings are, are fatter, or there's more distance between them. In difficult years, the rings are real short when there's crisis in the environment. And for my parents, I, was, I went through seasons where I created crisis for them. You know, I was not easy to raise. I was, I was into drugs when I was in high school, all kinds of problems. And, uh, and now, again, they're not perfect, but I'm talking about my part. And they had, there was some effort. In fact, I think some of their gray hair came from, those are like rings, you know? They're just like, <laughs> I shouldn't have had all this. Premature balding, all these things. Andy, you know, thanks for what you bring, you know? So I, I pre- sometimes it's just important to appreciate people and for the effort that they give, even though they're not perfect, even though they made mistakes, we recognize their effort. So how do we do that? Let me give you three things as we wrap it up, okay, in this, in this uh, series and get real. If you're going to appreciate, the first thing you need to do is make it real. Make it real. Romans 12 verse 9 says, don't just pretend that you love others, really love them. So circle those words, pretend and really. See, there's one is flattery. You just say it because maybe it gets you something that you want. And sometimes people say that, watch out, if somebody pats you on the back, they're just wanting you to cough up something. You know, I mean, just, they just want something from you. So we need to be very sincere. And ultimately, you know whether it's sincere, but usually it comes out as well in the way we appreciate people. So being sincere about it, having a sincere heart, Really, not just cheap, cheap praise, but he says there, don't just pretend to love others, really love them. Good advice. Number two, make it recognizable. It needs to be clear. It needs to, they shouldn't have to guess. Was that, was, that a, was that an appreciative comment or not? Make it specific. Sometimes, you know, at the end of the service, I'm sometimes, very, you know, I'm tired emotionally and a number of people will come up, hey, you know, no, give me a, a word of encouragement. And that's nice. I appreciate that. I want you to know. Sometimes I'm not clear. It's not clear. I don't really know. Was that, was that an appreciative comment? So, you know, sometimes if I'm not sure, over the years I've created a little list. I, I wanted to read you uh, a couple of them. Okay, one lady came to me. She said, you know, whenever you speak, she says, I wonder how could it get better? I'm thinking, hmm, I'm, I'm wondering the same thing now. I wasn't. <laughs> Another lady came up and she said, you know, I'm always amazed at what's in your mind. <laughs> okay. Some guy, he had fallen asleep and I don't know if he knew I knew, but his eyes were closed, so that's a good hint, right? <laughs> so he comes up, he goes, hey, uh, you might have noticed my eyes were closed, but I'm sure I didn't miss anything. <laughs> like, uh, I guess you didn't. And then uh, I have a some pastor friends, one person told me that he was thinking about his message and he cut himself shaving. He said that to the, to the congregation. He goes, hey, this, that's why I have this on my face. I was thinking about the message. And then he really preached. He said he was really into it, preached way long, wore everybody out, almost an hour of preaching. And so at the end of the service, somebody came up and said, hey, you know, next time, keep your mind on your shaving and cut the message. <laughs> 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 Another pastor, I know, she uh, said that some, somebody came up and said, you know, when you preach, it's like manna from heaven. And then she got to thinking about it. She goes, manna means what is it? And then it's also bland and rots within 24 hours. She goes, well, was that true? Anyways, we need to be clear. We need to, when we're, when we're sharing, right? Proverbs 15, 33, what a joy it is to find just the right word for the right occasion. And when we do that, when we hit a home run, boy, it feels great. You know, when you find the right word, let's go for that. Let's try to make that a regular practice. Proverbs 12, 25, a word of encouragement does wonders. And then number three, make it regular. Make it regular. It's something that you build into what you 
say. 2 Thessalonians 2.13 in the Jerusalem Bible said, we ought to continually thank God for you. Notice that word continually. It's a regular. Galatians 6.10. Whenever we can, we should always be kind to everyone, especially to our Christian brothers. So he's saying, lift people up. They need it. They need it daily. Again, as I said at the beginning, you don't withhold something from somebody you know they need so badly. If you have the power to give it to them, you wouldn't do that with food or other things. Why in the world would we do it with appreciation? And so you say, well, they're hard to appreciate. Or maybe you say, I don't, you know, I don't, I'm not that kind of person. I wasn't raised that way. My wife knows she loves me or that I love her. I don't have to tell her. Well, you know, maybe you, maybe it'd be a good idea for you to tell her. You go, I don't know how to love all my kids. I don't know how to appreciate them. Well, learn how to, you know, do what you need to do to start figuring it out, whether you were raised that way or not and hug your kids and kiss them and love on them. Look for opportunities, not just within your family, but all around you. John Wesley said this. He said, do all the good you can by all the means you can and all the ways you can and all the places you can at all the times you can to all the people you can as long as you can. I like that. And he says, look for those opportunities. They're all around if you're looking for them. If you get up each day and you say, today is the day I'm going to offer the world a redeemed person. So for me, it'd be a redeemed Andy. What God is doing in me, how I can be other-centered. I don't have to always be worried and focused about myself because God is going to watch over me. God is going to make sure I get what I need. That is what the world needs. And that's what we can give. You know, the world's a sad place. There's a lot of bad news all around. And we're constantly reminded of that. We're driven to places where we can have fear and anxiety about the stock market or about uh, North Korea or whatever. And there's lots of that all around, with the, MB, with the, yeah, with the NFL, uh, just everywhere. Let's be people where we are people that bring light to the world. We, we're people that just don't fall into criticism and complaining. We learn to be people who are appreciative. And we appreciate people around us. You know, the Bible says to not be grateful to not be appreciative is actually a sin. It ranks it in the sins with uh, like witchcraft and occultism and not being, not being uh, appreciative or grateful. And so we, it's, it's, our, it's our, what God expects from us. We bring that. That's part of what we bring to the world around us. We are able to, by God's help, appreciate people around us. Scientists say that the healthiest attitude that somebody can have is gratitude and being appreciative. And that it, it, people actually live longer. It's good for your health, emotionally, physically. So here's the homework I have for you. I put it in your outline. Who do you need to appreciate this week? Who do you need to appreciate this week? I mean, hopefully you weren't just part of this Bible study today and just thinking... Well, I deserve appreciation. Who's, you know, who's, I hope so-and-so's listening. <laughs> it's due over here. I mean, if that's where you're at, certainly uh, it's my prayer that you would get a sense that your life matters, that you are valued from the people around you because you deserve that. That is true. But ultimately, you can't control other people. You can control yourself. And that's what God, he always speaks to you. When we read the Bible, he speaks to us. He's, he's, he's not wanting us, when we read the Bible, he doesn't want us to go and try to change other people. He wants us to change so that thereby we change people around us. And so who do you need to appreciate? Is there somebody who could really use your appreciation? Maybe you need to take them out to lunch, text them, email them, call them up on the phone, give them, you know, a, a video conference through Zoom or something, and you say, hey, I want to let you know, it's been a while since I've really told you that I appreciate how you stuck with me. You've been faithful. Or I appreciate you're, you're different. And maybe I haven't always valued that, but I'm glad that God made you different. I'm glad that you're different. I'm glad for the effort that you made. It wasn't always easy. And that's where it starts because it's so easy to leave today and just forget everything we talked about and just go, you know, just go on with your day, whatever you're going to do, go on with your week. Don't do that. If you, if you forget easy, do it today. 
do it today. But do it this week, certainly, where you go and you appreciate somebody for how God's made them different than you and for the effort that they make, for the loyalty that they brought. It means something. Okay, let's bow our heads and pray, and we'll ask God to help us. Well, Lord, I pray for those who feel unappreciated right now. And that's, that's so sad because I know that you want everybody here to know how much they're loved, how much they matter, how valuable they are. And that is God's word to you. Daniel talked a little earlier about how God had a word for you. His word is that you matter to him. You really do. You matter to God. And everything we read about in the Bible, that's the overarching theme over and over, is you, God says, you matter to me. And we're just going to take a moment right now. If, and I'm just going to invite you just to kind of say, God, help me to learn to be an appreciative person. Help me to learn to appreciate somebody. In my, you know, maybe it's your spouse. Maybe it's a friend, a boss, an employee, someone. Help me to be more appreciative. Help me to see when they were faithful. Help me to see when they were loyal. Help me to see when they gave effort. How about the person who has been praying for you? How about the person who prayed for you before you even became a Christ follower? Maybe they let you know about that. Other people, maybe they just gave up on you. Some, maybe there was somebody who was praying for you for years. It's a lot of effort. How about the person who mentors you and talks to you about important spiritual things in your life? They challenge you. They care enough about you. Maybe it's a small group leader. Maybe it's somebody else. They're not perfect, but they care and they're showing effort. You know, there's nobody who showed more effort than Jesus Christ when he came and died on the cross, lived a life to communicate how much you matter to him. When is the last time you gave God 10 or 15 minutes of time to appreciate your thanks for him? You know, you wouldn't even be alive if it wasn't for God. For you just to say, God, thank you. Why not do that right now? Thank you, God, for giving me this life, for putting me in this generation, not some other generation in the past or in the future, but this generation. Give me boldness to proclaim your word, to proclaim your goodness. If you have never put your faith in Christ, do that right now. People are praying for you right now. But you're in an important place in history and in your life because God speaks to you now and he's saying, I want to have a close relationship with you. And we find ourselves at crossroads, decision points. And some of you are in that place right now, a decision point. And when that happens, there's warfare that happens. Spiritual warfare, the Bible says. That's why we're praying for you. I challenge you, I invite you, come. Would you say yes to God? Say thank you. Right now, just in your mind, God will know if you're, ser if you're sincere. Say, God, today I want to begin that journey with you. I put my faith in Jesus Christ. Forgive me for my sin, for the things I've done wrong. And thank you for the resurrection power. Jesus Christ was resurrected from the cross. He says he gives you that power. Say, God, thank you for resurrection power to live this life. I won't be perfect, but I'm going to be somebody who's redeemable. Every day I get up. Say, God, help me every day I get up to face the world 
is somebody who can show appreciation, lift other people up, add value to them. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for listening to this week's message. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't hesitate to write us your story at amen at vineyardchurch.com and we'll see you next week.